Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. We'll pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell them that friendship is on. Can we pray tonight? Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come into your homes. Now, Father, I pray that the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight of all my strength and my Redeemer. Father, I pray that those that are watching tonight and those that might watch the replay, Father, that their lives will never be the same. That healing shall take upon their lives. Deliverance shall take upon their lives. Healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for friendship. We thank you for our deacons. We thank you for our trustees. We thank you for all of those that make up this great ministry. Now, Father, do as only you can do. Breathe your breath. Breathe life on us today. And we give your name praise. We give your name honor, glory. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, it's another, it's another Wednesday. And we're grateful to the Lord that the Lord has afforded us an opportunity to come into your homes and wherever you might be viewing us at. We are ecstatic. We are elated that you are here with us tonight. Listen, just a Excuse me, just a few announcements to keep you what's going on this Sunday. This Sunday is our in-person worship at 10 a.m. We want you to bring a friend, tell a neighbor, look, come to church. Uh, there is a worship and a word with your name on it. Uh, during our Sunday morning service, your communion package will be available uh, during our morning service. We want to say congratulations to Friendship. We have reached 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel. Listen, we want you to uh, invite someone else. Tell somebody, uh, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, look, tell them to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, for our Friendship uh, Church. We have great things that are in store. We want you to keep you updated on what's going on. Uh, also, last but not least, we want to uh, thank all of our youth uh, for the Black History Moments this month. Uh, we honor you. We thank God for you. You did a phenomenal job, and we want you to tell you. We want to tell you that you, you keep going, don't stop, uh, because it is very important. You are important, and we thank God for you. Listen, it's word time. Let's share in the word of the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 137, verses one through four. One thirty-seven. Psalm 137, verses 1 through 4. We honor God because God has been great to us and we love him tonight. Psalm 134, Psalm 137, uh, verses 1 through 4. It says, by the river of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required of us a song, and they that wasted us require of us miss saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How Shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I want to title our lesson tonight just for a few moments. Singing in a strange place. Singing in a strange place. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, as history suggests, psalms are used uh, for many purposes. Uh, uh, to tell stories, it is to express emotions or to convey a belief or in faith. Sometimes they give instructions or help make difficult, repetitive work a little less tiresome. Uh, brothers, there are nine health benefits of music. It it's it's a healthy or heart healthy research research have shown that blood flows more easily when music is played it evaluates uh it it elaborates muse, the moods it reduces stress it relieves symptoms of depression it stimulates memories it manages pain it eases pain it it, it helps people to eat less 
you know how it is. That's why it is very important that when we sing songs, songs have meaning. If you don't believe it, uh, people have made millions singing and writing songs that sometime that even until today, them, these same songs have meaning. And brothers and sisters, you understand. Listen, you are not saved all your life, but you know how it is. If you if your right music can on the right song came on uh, you knew how it, it made you feel a certain way just like it is in the church just like it is in God and when we come to church that's why it's important that when we sing the songs of Zion that we're not singing something just because we want to sing them but we want to sing them because it has a meaning behind it everything that we sing everything that we we do has a meaning. And brothers and sisters, why is that's why you have to understand that the devil got kicked out of heaven, so he already knows him and one third of his of his people got kicked out, and so he knows how to maneuver in music. He knows how to get what he wants, and you have to understand that even in music, you have to understand that when David, when Saul uh, got beside himself and saw uh, there was a problem going on. They called for David. David began to play the harp and everything that was going wrong became smooth. You have to understand. That's why it is very vital that we don't sing something because we want to sing it, but we have to sing it because it has a meaning. Here it is in our text tonight. Psalm, uh, the book of Psalm contains ancient Israel's favorite hymns and prayers, which are used in their worship of God, the great king. Uh, throughout the book of Psalm, Psalms, you will find many hymns, prayers, uh, uh, and devotion of their worship to God. The book of Psalm is a collective of 150 ancient uh, heroes. Through songs and prayers. Psalms give voice to personal feelings that uh, they are poetic and not doctrine essays. The psalmists frequently were in uh, interested in how something felt more than what it meant. Think of the psalms as entirely as a diary. They reflect people's most intimate encouragers with God. Watch for figures of speech uh, and repetitive. Poet language requires that you read the heart, uh, read with your heart as well as your mind. Uh, it is said that and noted that the various psalms help us to see that God responds to us in our emotional highs and in our lows. We must understand that for years, for things, we have always said that David was penned the psalm. But not only David, but we have David, we have Asaph, we have the sons of Corinth, we have Solomon, we have uh, Ethan, Moses, and unknown authors that all took a pen and begin to write uh, the book of Psalm. That the timeline is between the time of Moses, probably about 1440 BC, and the following of Babylon Exxon after 538 BC. Uh, we must understand that this this the psalm was was writing to the audience of God's people. You must understand. We we understand the great hymn of the church. It is well. Uh, there was a gentleman uh, by the name of Horetta Gates. Uh, he penned uh, this. It is well. He was a. Uh, uh, African or American lawyer and Presbyterian church elder. He is best known for penning the Christian hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, after a family tragedy in which his four daughters died abroad, uh, this SSV transitional bondage. In other words, as he was uh, coming past where his daughters were killed. He began to pin this, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it 
is well. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that as we go through this life, we must understand that singing, that music, that even though what we go through, God uh, has written our, God has written our experience and put it in music. What do you mean? That he takes our burdens. He's The songwriter said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Let me get to the text this, this evening that the text now finds us here. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for they carried us away. In other words, they were in captivity and they only began, when they began to have their downtime, they sat by the, the, the willow. They began to sit by uh, the willows, and they begin to play their harp, and they begin to remember what it was, and they said, no, listen, they carried us away. They they said, no, give me a song, and I want to tell you something, people of God, that the enemy is waiting for you to sing, no matter where you are, no matter where you are in your life, it does not matter. Keep singing, because even when you get in a storm, the songs, uh, even when you get in a place that you feel like God is not there. You ought to understand uh, what the, the songwriter said, with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, I will bless thee, O Lord. And my question this evening is, can you bless God in trouble? Can you bless God when, when trials and tribulations come in your life? No. Can you really bless God when the enemy of your soul desires you more than what God is desiring you. What do you mean? Because every time you do good, evil is always present. Can I get somebody to put it in the comment and tell somebody just keep on singing? He they say, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? What do you mean? How am I? Go, oh, how can I? Can I get to a place? How can I get to a place where uh, I, I need God to go? How can I sing the lost song in a place where I'm unfamiliar? The problem is, no matter how from unfamiliar you are, open up your mouth and sing the lost song. They said how they wanted us, they carried us away. And they said they wanted us to sing the lost song. They wanted to hear what you was going to say. How are you going to do uh, 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 how can you do the things of God when the enemy of your soul, the enemy has you in a captive, captive mind. He has you held captive. And, and in this season of our lives, it is the enemy's job to keep our mouth shut. It is the enemy's job to keep us from singing. It's the enemy's job to keep us from doing the kingdom of gender. But I want to tell somebody this evening that even when you're in a place that you don't even know how you're going to get out, sing. You don't know how you're going to make it sing. You don't know how you're going to come out of it, sing. What do you mean? I don't know how to sing. No, he did not say sing on target. He did not sing on key. He said, open up your mouth. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is. And what you must understand is that I'm singing in a place that I'm, I'm held captive. I'm, I'm in a place that I don't know how I'm going to come out. I don't know how this is going to work for me. I don't know how this is going to do. But what have you in your, what have you, what do you have in your, in your, in your bag? That when you, when you get yourself in a predicament, will you sing? Will you shout? Or will you just let things go? But I want to tell you something this evening, that don't you let nothing stop you from opening up your mouth. My, my assignment tonight is very this, for they carry us away captive, requiring us a song, and they that wasted us required us 
Sing and sing as one of the songs of Zion. The question arises, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange place, in a strange land? It's easy. S songs, a song comes out of your experience. Songs come out of your devotion. Songs come out of your worship. Songs come. You don't wait till you get to church to sing. You that's somebody. Uh, you sing in the shower. You sing in your car. You sing. You sing in your. But 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 when you get in a place that is unfamiliar, I want to tell you tonight. Don't stop singing. Don't allow the enemy of your soul to stop you from singing the Lord's song. The Lord's song comes out, is birthed out of prayer. It is birthed out of things that sometimes we cannot understand ourselves. You say to God, how, how am I supposed to do this? I have no recognition of what's going on in my life. I have allowed things, I've allowed people, I've allowed places to deter me from the place of God. But I want to tell you something tonight. That while we're in this unfamiliar territory, we don't know what life is going to bring from day to day. We don't know what kind of tribulations and trials we're going to have from day to day. But whatever you do, don't lose your song. The great songs of the church we sing them because they have meaning. They have meaning, brother. We sing them because they are birthed out of experience. We sing them because they help us in our time of desperation. I want to tell you tonight, as we get ready to pray and move on, I want to tell you tonight, Don't stop singing. He said, Preacher, how, how am I supposed to sing? When I don't, maybe you said, I don't know what to sing. They can say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. How firm a foundation. The hymns of the church is what brought us to this place hymns in the church and music has meanings. Find your song and don't stop singing. Find your song and don't stop singing. How do I sing? Just keep on singing. Father, we thank you for this moment that you have allowed us to come and to we give your name praise. We thank you for these, your people that have consented to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Now, Father, here we are standing in a place of need. The enemy has tried to carry us away and, and, and take our song. But Father, I pray today, don't allow our song to be silent. but allow our song to be heard. That you're breaking prison doors, you're breaking captivity, you're, you're breaking us out of everything that has held us down. Father, we love you tonight and we give your name praise. We thank you and we give your name glory, honor. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, 
We thank you for joining us tonight and we hope and pray that this word has helped you. This word has delivered you. Listen, meet us Sunday morning for our in-person worship. There is a worship and a word waiting with your name on it. Listen, once again, we love you. As we all times say, we love you. And there's nothing that you can do about it. We'll see you in church. <laughs>